Welcome back. We'll continue our discussion on antihistamines. In this video, we'll be seeing about the second generation antihistamines or newer antihistamines. And we'll be seeing about astamazole, loratadin, cetracin. And then in the later part of the video, we'll be talking about mast cell stabilizers, chromalin sodium. So let us begin our discussion on second generation antihistamines. So uh, what was the need or what was the necessity for developing a second generation antihistamines or what were the disadvantages or problems associated with the first generation antihistamines. So under to understand that what you see on the screen is a, a label of a first generation antihistaminic drug diphenhydramine. Uh, hydrochloride, diphenhydramine hydrochloride. You can see that so there are certain warnings given in the label and those warnings are, you can read that those warnings. Uh, when using this product, marked drowsiness may occur. Avoid alcoholic drinks, alcohol, sedative and tranquilizers may increase drowsiness. So be careful when driving a motor vehicle or operating machinery. So these are the warning that indicates that these agents, that is the first generation antihistamines, antihistaminic agents, produces sedation, marked sedation, drowsiness. So that that is they will interfere with the, with your daily routine activities. So that was a major disadvantage with the first generation antihistamines. They produce marked sedation, drowsiness or sleepiness. Okay. Along with that, they also produce some anticholinergic side effects like dryness of mouth, etc. So in order to overcome them, overcome those side effects, second generation antihistamines were developed. So what you can understand is that second generation antihistamines produces no sedation or if it may produce some only mild sedation. Why the second generation antihistamines produces no sedation? Why, why is it so? Because they are selective peripheral H1 antihistaminic agent. What do you mean by peripheral? Peripheral means that they do not have any action in brain. That is, they don't reach the central nervous system. Then, why they don't reach the central nervous system? The answer lies in the chemistry of these agents. Okay, this, the second generation antihistamines are actually a derivatives or a modified version of first generation antihistamines. First generation antihistamines are more lipophilic. That means they can readily cross the blood brain barrier, whereas the second generation antihistamine contains certain polar functional groups either at the terminal nitrogen atom or at the aryl groups and moreover this second generation antihistamines are amphotric in nature and they exist as switter ions in physiological ph and as i mentioned earlier they contain polar functional groups like carboxylic acid coh uh, that makes it more polar and less lipophilic. So all these factors makes the compound less lipophilic and hence they will not cross the blood brain barrier. And then uh, these second generation antihistamines are also substrates of P glycoprotein transporters. That is even if the antihistamines, the second generation antihistamines cross the blood brain barrier, they are rapidly expelled or actively expelled by these transporter proteins from the blood brain barrier into the peripheral circulation. So, what is the ultimate result of these factors? The second generation antihistamines will not reach the central nervous system and they will not interact with the H1 receptors present in the central nervous system, and as a result of that they don't produce any sedation. These second generation antihistamines are potent and they have long half-life. 
Now coming to the classification of second generation antihistamines, they can be classified into piperazine derivatives, example cetracin. Then, then piperidine derivatives, example loratadine. Then piperidinyl benzimidazole derivative, example is astemazole. So let's see the chemistry of cetracin. So this is the structure of cetracin. You can see some similarities similarities with the cyclizin derivatives. Cyclizin derivatives are where piperazine derivatives. So here also you can see a piperazine ring and then the aryl part is same as that of the cyclizin derivatives. You can see these are the some of the uh, cyclizin derivatives. Chlorcyclizin, meclizin, uh, buclizin etc. So all these contain the piperazine nucleus and the aryl part. They are similar in these cyclizin derivatives as well as in the cetracin. So their piperazine derivatives it is similar to piperazine derivative. The difference lies in the groups attached at the terminal nitrogen atom. So in chlorcyclizin the terminal nitrogen atom carries a methyl group. In meclizin hydrochloride the terminal nitrogen atom carries a uh, meta substituted benzyl ring in buclizin hydrochloride the terminal nitrogen atom carries a tertiary butyl substituted benzyl ring whereas in cetracin the groups are more polar the nitrogen atom the terminal nitrogen atom contains a polar functional group it is actually ethoxy acetic acid derivative you can see an ethoxy acetic acid ring attached to the terminal nitrogen atom in cetracin and the presence of this acetic acid nucleus, CH3 acid group, makes it more polar and hence less lipophilic. And therefore, they will not cross the blood brain barrier. Now, this cetracin is a highly potent and long acting antihistamine. It will not cross the blood brain barrier and so it will not produce any sedation. It contains a chiral carbon atom, so it is optically active. Levocitrazin, our enantiomer, is more potent, 30 times more potent than the racemic mixture. And the advantage of citrazin is that it is not toxic, not at all cardiac toxic. And then coming to the uses of Cetrazin. It is used in the treatment of allergic conditions like rhinitis, sneezing, itching of eyes, nose, etc. The point to be noted in the case of second generation antihistamines, citrazin is that uh, the first generation antihistamines, because of their anti-muscarinic property, they are used in, in as anti-emetic, then in motion sickness, etc. But citrazin does not have any anti-emetic action, so it cannot be used in the treatment of motion sickness, nausea and vomiting, etc. It is exclusively used as an anti-histaminic uh, in allergic conditions like sneezing, uh, running nose, etc. Okay, we will see the next second generation antihistamine, loratadin. Loratadine, if you look at the structure of loratadine, you can see similarities with uh, dibenzocycloheptines and dibenzocycloheptanes. That is, it is more similar to acetadine. acetadine. But if you closely examine the structure, then there are, you can spot three differences. One is that uh, the benzene ring one of the benzene ring is replaced by a pyridine ring. Pyridine ring is present. And second difference is that a chlorine atom is substituted at the 8th position of the benzyl, uh, phenyl ring. And then the third difference is that the piperidine methyl group, the methyl group attached at the piperidine nitrogen atom is replaced by an ethyl ester of a carbamic acid. So you can say that loratadine is an ethyl ester derivative of a carbamic acid similar to acetadine. By the way, what is carbamic acid? 
carbamic acid is NH2COOH and ethyl ester of carbamic acid means NH2COOC2H5. So this loratadine contains this ethyl ester of carbamic acid. Okay, this is one of the popular brand of loratadine, Claritin. Uh, this you can just see the label of Claritin. It is uh, it is an antihistamine, and then it is uh, its action lasts for 24 hours. That means it is a long-acting antihistamine agent. And then it is non-drowsy since it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. It does not produce the sedation. And then it is it can it is used mainly for the allergic purposes, uh, relief of sneezing, running nose, itchy, watery eyes. Uh, itchy throat etc so it is basically a uh, antihistamine antihistaminic action with no sedation okay uh, these are the structural features that we have already uh, seen so it is basically a peripheral h1 antihistaminic agent with no uh, sedation and cardiotoxicity and then it is a carboxylic acid ethyl ester derivative of uh, ester derivative similar to acetidine and cyproheptadine and we have also seen the uses of uh, loratadine it is an antihistaminic agent mainly used for the relief of nasal and non-nasal allergic rhinitis now coming to the third example of uh, second generation antihistamine is astemizol it is a benzimidazole derivative, benzimidazole piperidinyl, benzimidazole derivative. Uh, since it is cardiotoxic, it is no more, it is not used. It is a selective H1 receptor antihistamine with no sedation, but it is cardiotoxic and hence it is not used nowadays. So moving on, we will see the next class of antihistamines, mast cell inhibitors or Histamine release inhibitors. Example is chromalin sodium. Coming to the chemistry of chromalin sodium. Chromalin sodium is bischromones. Chromones are 1,4-benzopyrone. Benzopyrone is a derivative of benzopyran with a substituted keto group on the pyran ring. Uh, so chromalin contain chromalin sodium contain this uh, 1 4 benzo pyron ring 1 4 benzo pyron ring in their structure they are bis chromones bis means they contain now this is the structure of chromalin sodium so you can see two chromone rings that is two benzo pyron ring and that is why it is known as bis chromones bis stands for two so two chromone rings and this uh, chromone rings are joined by a propane propane that is not it is a propanol chain propanol chain that is two propanol chain and a carboxylic acid is present in the uh, pyran pyran ring okay so they are used as a sodium salt sodium salt of chromalin is used then uh, they are mast cell degranulation inhibitors. So that is they stabilize the mast cells and prevent the release of uh, in mediators of allergy like histamine, prostaglandins, leukotrienes from the mast cells. And they also inhibit the entry of calcium into the mast cells and thereby it also prevents the release of, uh, again it prevents the release of histamine. And as such, they don't have any intrinsic bronchodilator or antihistaminic or anticholinergic activity. What they does is they just prevent the release of histamine from the mast cells. And coming to their uses, uh, they are used for the treatment of complications arising from the excessive release of histamine. And they are highly water soluble salts and they are mainly uh, used in solution forms. So what you see here is a chromalin sodium inhalation solution. This solution is used for nebulization or as an aerosol spray for the prophylactic management of bronchial asthma. Now this is a chromalin sodium nasal solution and that is, it is used for the prevention and treatment of allergic rhinitis nasal solution. Now next is the chromalin sodium ophthalmic solution. It is meant for the allergic conjunctivitis. 
And finally, you have chromalin sodium oral concentrate. That is, it contains a 100 milligram per 5 ml ampule. So it is used for the treatment of diarrhea, flushing, headache, vomiting, urticaria, abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting due to histamine release and mastocytosis. Mastocytosis is the excessive pro proliferation of mast cells. Or, so these oral concentrate of chromalin sodium uh, comes in ampules. So you have to break open the cro uh, chromalin sodium ampule and then uh, transfer the liquid into a glass of water approximately around 100 ml and take it uh, just before 30 minutes of food and so and this uh, all whatever the preparations of chromalin sodium they are mainly used as a prophylactic measure uh, then they cannot be used for the management of acute attack of histamine release so it is mainly used for the prophylactic treatment of uh, symptoms associated with histamine release as they block the release of histamine from the mast cells. So this, with this, we will finish our uh, class on antihistamines. We have seen the first generation antihistamines, second generation antihistamines, and mast cell stabilizers. You have, uh, you have to learn the synthesis of uh, those compounds that are given uh, in the first generation antihistamines. They are important, and they may be asked in, the, in your university examinations. So with this, thank you all.